Kenya Airways yesterday issued notice number 008 stroke 2020 to all Kenya Airways people. In that notice, they announced the death of one of their longest serving captain, Captain Daudi Kimiyo Kibate. Let me just read for you what the content of that notice. It's saying the headline read death announcement for the late Captain Daudi Kimuyu Kimuyu Kibati 787 fleet. We regret to announce the death of our colleague Captain Daudi Kimuyu Kibati which occurred on 1st April 2020. Until his death, Captain Kibati was a captain on on the 787 fleet in operations department. That's the Dreamliner. Details of his burial Details of his funeral arrangements will be given later. On behalf of the board of directors, the management and the staff of Kenya Airways, we wish we join the family of the late captain Kibati in mourning their beloved one and pray that the almighty God will strengthen them during this time of sorrow. Kibati was one of the longest serving captains with the Kenya Airways. Now earlier in one of the WhatsApp groups with for the for the pilots the, there was this which was posted dear friends with with the sadness we share the news of the sudden death of Major Kibati husband to Jane Kibati from Kasivuni and Parishona and Parishona at Don Bosco. He succumbed to the pandemic. Let's pray for Jane and their two sons as we implore God to rest the departed in eternal peace. He was a long serving captain at Kenya Airways and flew the last plane from New York City to Nairobi last Wednesday. Now that's where the details are. So Captain Kibati succumbed to the pandemic. And the sad part is that he flew the last flight into the country. Now this is what happened. On 22nd, the government of Kenya announced a ban on all international flights into the country and those leaving the country. That move was aimed at curbing this crisis. Because by that time, I think the government had announced around 15 cases and all those 15 cases could be traced from people who had traveled into the country so the government in its own wisdom decided to ban all international flights into the country and that ban which was announced on 22nd was supposed to take effect on 25th because you know logistic of flights which were already on air the ones which were supposed to come back they had, they were given up to 25th and while the president of Kenya was announcing that ban in the United States Donald Trump was also announcing travel bans. And one of the Kenya Airways plane was in the United States of America, New York City to be precise. And for those who follow this crisis, New York City is basically an epicenter of all this. So Captain Daudi Kimuyu Kibati had a plane there. So the Kenya Airways also in their wisdom, I think through the advice of the government decided because there was a crisis they decided to announce that they were go- they were willing to offer free tickets to Kenyans who are stuck in New York because there was a plane which was coming to the country so they announced that they were going to offer free tickets to Kenyans who are stuck there but these Kenyans were going to be subjected to the measures which have been placed which had been put in place by the ministry, by the ministry of health when they land into the country basically once they land into the country they were going to be quarantined so kenyans flooded this particular plane and it flew basically on 24th and landed into this country i don't know whether it was early morning or whatever time it landed carrying so many kenyans in it as a matter of fact in my view that was a good move by the by, by, by the kenyan government whether it was by the kenya airways or by the kenyan government because Kenyans were stuck even as we speak now even as I speak now there are around 15 Kenyans who are stuck in Dubai they can't make their way into the country 
they can't walk freely into Dubai, but they are confined into the airport. And because there was a plane there, these guys were told to come. So Kenyans came. And once they landed into the country, Captain Kibati and the first officer decided to quarantine themselves. And on Sunday, this guy fell unwell. He fell ill. And he went to Nairobi Hospital. And while in Nairobi Hospital, he tested positive for the virus. And I'm told even the first officer also tested positive and several other crew. And Sunday, these guys succumbed. He succumbed now on first to the virus. So I think this guy should be treated as a hero in this country. Why am I saying so? This guy, a week earlier or several weeks earlier, this guy had also flown a flight from Kenya to Italy. And also from Italy, he carried several Kenyans back into the country. Remember, by that time, this case was still not very serious because very few Kenyans were affected. So he was also in Italy. Italy was also an epicenter of this virus by that time. And when he came into the country, he was subjected to test and he was negative. But when those, ca those cases were confirmed, when we started confirming those cases, and it became clear that anybody who is elderly was at risk, I had expected him to refuse to fly to New York. Because this guy is 64. According to his contract, he was only remaining with 10 months to retire. But he took that risk and flew to New York. So it's normal. I'm very sad, but again proud of him at the same time. Very few Kenyans would take such a risk. A risk of taking your time, risking your life to go and rescue Kenyans who are stuck somewhere else. Very few people. This guy comes from Kitui. And I was reading, I was re reading, a, I mean, I was just going through Facebook. And uh, I was going through Siosumbwe or Siany. And she posted something which really struck me. She's saying, my village in Kitui County has lost a great man. I have fond memories of Captain Kibati. He would fly a chopper. He would fly a chopper home and on reaching Maliku Primary School, he would chop rounds and somersault. This reminds me of a captain around our area when I was young who would come with a plane, fly over, but also this guy was involved in some accident. To us, we looked up forward to a day we could fly while others inspired to be pilots like him. So this is a guy who gave people in his village a lot of inspiration. So when you are when you are tuned into a presser by C.S. Mutai Kagwe, this is why I was reading this. And you hear two Kenyans have succumbed. And you are like, where is the evidence? You see, most Kenyans up to now have not believed. Mutai Kagwe. That the Kenyan government, they believe, are still playing PR with the lives of Kenyans. This virus is real, my friends. As a country, let us just listen to what the government is saying. This is what the lady is advising, that when you are tuned into a presser by C.S. Mutai Kagwe, and you hear that two Kenyans have succumbed, you are like, where is the evidence? You are only saying that because it, it has not hit home. This is someone who was known, a father, a senior pilot, and because people know him, at least now, Kenyans can confirm. But when Brenda and Brian were confirmed to have having been recovered, most Kenyans still believe that the government was playing PR. 
I don't think the government can be that irresponsible. I know sometimes maybe Brenda didn't come out very clearly because is, people had issues with Brenda talking about Brian and later on dumping Brian. That's personal. You never know why she dumped her. And one of my friends, people I really value a lot, Wafula Buke, posted that he spoke to a doctor and confirmed to him that indeed these were patients there. And because I can take Wafula Buke's word to bank, to any bank, I want to believe that Brenda and Brian were patients and they have recovered. Again, this is the case of uh, the Kilifi. This is also the case of the Kilifi deputy governor who also recovered. But because people know him, people don't bring issues with that. So I think this guy should be treated as a hero in this country. Kenya Airways has lost someone who was giving the airline a good name outside there. This is a guy who worked as a Kenya Air Force pilot those times. And the family have said, and that's why I'm not going to share any photo of this guy on this platform, the family has requested that this guy was living a quiet life. He didn't want any publicity. He would just do his things politely and he made a request that if anything happens to him, he should be laid to rest peacefully, quietly. So the family have organized, I think about the burial should be tomorrow and it will be just very few friends. And they've also requested that this guy didn't want his photos to be circulated online. Of course, a few photos will find their way, but he requested that for privacy, he didn't want his photos to be circulated online. Yeah, But because it's a guy who valued this country so much, he had to suffer, he had to succumb. My only prayer is that the first officer should recover so that he can tell the story. I'm told several other Kenya Airways staffs are also turn, turn, also turned positive. So this time is not the time for blame games. Let's not blame ourselves. Because if you blame Kenya Airways for allowing their flights to go and collect Kenyans who are stuck there, those are also Kenyans. They needed to come back home. In any circumstance, there are people who must take the bullet. And in this case, Captain Kamiyu took the ultimate price. He decided to take it for the sake of Kenyans. I want to take this opportunity to pray for the family and to pray with them that God will give them comfort and strength at during this particular difficult moment. I don't know what you think. Maybe you can let me know your comments. But I want to just take a second or two and just drop your message of goodwill to the family of this captain. Thank you guys and please may you have a good day.